You know, there are many things out there, whether it's literature, music, movies, or art, that once it starts to become popular or mainstream, it starts to, uh, it starts to blow. Take uh, country music, for example. Do you realize that five companies control close to 90% of the country music market? Which is one of the many, many reasons why corporate country sucks. They're anywhere but Nashville. I want to be myself. Hi, I'm Frank LaPlante, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Corporate Country Sucks. Now, before we get too deep into this episode, I want to talk about why corporate country does, in fact, suck. Take Hollywood movies, for example. The public has gotten used to this spoon-fed crap that's been shoveled at them for the past years, where it's formulaic, and all types of creativity or rawness or energy is stifled out of it. The same holds true for corporate country music. But believe it or not, there's still some very raw, talented, independent music being made out there that the general public is never able to see. So here at Corporate Country Sucks, in our own tiny little way, we're going to expose you to some of those lesser known bands, give you the ability to see people out there who are making real music today, and hopefully introduce you to some things that you might not have ordinarily seen. Old timers or country music purists think there's only two types of country music, country and western. And I'm very sorry, my bald-headed director made me say that joke. But the point here is, we're all about independent country music. It could be bluegrass, it could be all country, it could be cow punk, it could be Americana, traditional country, it doesn't matter. If it's independent and it's good, you're going to see it here. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to cover a bunch of things. We're going to start out with showing you some new independent country music videos. We're going to give you some independent country music news. We're going to tell you more in depth exactly why corporate country sucks. And then finally, we're going to have Grammy-nominated, cute as a button, talented and handsome, Billy Yates for a live in-studio performance. Okay, so the first video today is going to be from a band called The Ducks. They're a five-piece out of Canada, and they've been called everything from progressive soul grass to many, many other things. But the point is, you can't put a label on truly good music. So here we are with The Ducks doing Miss Down Below. I'm 
The Ducks self-titled album can be found on Sugar Hill Records. You can also learn more about the Ducks if you go to their website, which is ducks.com. Now be careful because they spell it kind of funky. It's D-U-H-K-S dot com. Okay, we're going to take a short break now. We're going to cover some of the local independent country news. This is the Corporate Country Sucks News Break. Independent country great Robbie Fuchs hosts a monthly show at the Old Town School of Folk Music called Secret Country. April 17th, John Cowan of Newgrass Revival fame headlines with Newgrass band The Green Cards opening the show. May's Secret Country show is on the 15th with Bobby Bear Jr. as the headliner. With Woody Guthrie as a grandfather and Arlo as her dad, Sarah Lee Guthrie certainly has folk music in her genes. Sarah Lee Guthrie and Johnny Arion will be playing at Fitzgerald's in Berwyn on April 16th. Also coming soon to Fitzgerald's, The Gourds on April 30th and Canada's own The Ducks on May 7th. If you have local independent country news that you would like to see on the show, just drop us a line at corporatecountrysucks at excite.com. The next video is from a bunch of young whippersnappers playing old-timey music. They're called The Old Crow Medicine Show, and this song is called Tell It To Me. Well, I'm around down Fifth Street, coming up main, trying to pull my neck apart to buy cocaine. Cocaine, they're gonna kill my honey dear. Want to tell it to me, tell it to me, drink the cold liquor, let the cocaine be. Cocaine, they're gonna kill my honey dear. from their self-titled CD from Network America Records. You can learn more about the band on their website, which is crowmedicine.com. So now we're going to get to my personal favorite part of the show, and that's where we get to prove to you why corporate country sucks. We're going to play you a sampling of some of the preeminent artists out there on corporate labels and let you decide for yourself how and why they suck. The first one up is Big and Rich with a song called Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. <laughs> Bills and it kills and it thrills like 
Okay. Okay. Now, if you really want to take a look at this song, a better title would be Save 20 Bucks, Don't Buy This CD. So even though I have a PhD in suckiness, occasionally I have to refer to my notes when there's that unique perfect storm of ultimate suckiness that transcends all suckiness known to man. And this next song we're going to listen to is The Pinnacle. Shania Twain and Billy Currington singing Party for Two. All right, sweet Jesus. Okay, uh, on a bangability scale, I give Shania a 10. On a listenability scale, she gets a one. I must admit, I might have been a little premature in uh, raking poor Shania over the coals as being the definition of sucky country corporate music. Because what we have right now is the Jedi master. We have the ultimate, we have the king of all kings, of sucky corporate country music. I'm not going to give you much more introduction other than say it's Toby Keith and it's How You Like Me Now. Okay. That's all I need to hear. Um, I got a couple things to talk about with uh, Mr. Keith right here. Number one, um, is it just me or does he sound like Hootie and the Blowfish trying to do country? That's number one. Number two, um, how you like me now? I'm not liking you at all. Never did like you. Hate you. And number three, this is not an example of why corporate country sucks. This is not an example of why music in general sucks. This is an example of why America is hurting. Please, please stop making music, Toby. Time now for another short, non-sucky, independent country music news update. You give us 20 seconds, and we'll give you more news. This is another Corporate Country Sucks news break. Believe it or not, Chicago has a thriving bluegrass scene. There is even an email list on Yahoo called Bluegrass Chatterbox. Some of the news coming out of the Chatterbox includes WDCB presents the special consensus 30th anniversary concert Saturday, May 7th at the Old Town School of Folk Music. Check out Chicago's most hip bluegrass band, Sex Fist. They play every Tuesday at the Red Lion Tap in Rogers Park. The Half Day Bluegrass Band plays April 25th at C.J. Arthur's in Wilmette. Grammy-nominated Lori Lewis and Tom Rosam are coming to the area as part of the great Bluegrass Legends series. See them at the American Legion Hall in Evanston on May the 20th. If you have local independent country news that you would like to see on the show, bluegrass or otherwise, just drop us a note at corporatecountrysucks at excite.com. We have one more video to play you before we introduce the lovely and talented Billy Yates. Here we are with Buddy Miller in Worry Too Much. It's a demolition derby. It's the sport of the hunt Crowd driving full war dance It's a slow smile that the bully gives the run It's the force of inertia It's the lack of constraint It's the children out playing in the rock garden All dolled up in black hats and war paint Sometimes it feels like bars of steel I cannot bend with my hands Oh, I worry too much Somebody told me that I worry too much Oh, I worry too much Somebody told me that What is seen 
It's the way we tell ourselves that all these things are normal till we can't remember what we mean. It's the flicker of our flames. It's the friction born of living. It's the way we beat a hot retreat and heave our smoking guns into the river. The vanity of nations It's the way there'll be no muffled drums To mark the passage of my generation It's the children of my children It's the lands born in innocence It's wondering if the good I know Will last to be seen by the eyes of the little ones Sometimes it feels like bars of steel I can't bed with my hands Oh, I worry too much Somebody told me that I worry too much Oh, I worry too much Somebody tell me that Buddy's latest album is called Universal House of Prayer. If you want to learn more, surf on over to his website, which is buddyandjulie.com. We're very lucky tonight to have a very successful singer-songwriter in our presence who is going to do a live performance for us tonight. His name is Billy Yates. He was born in a small Missouri town and is now based out of Nashville. He's a Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter who has written songs for such major artists as George Strait and David Allen Coe. And although he has performed for the dreaded major labels, he has started his own successful label called MOD Records. So today, we're going to sit and talk to Billy. Welcome to Chicago. Hey, man. How are you? I'm doing well. You're Thanks, man. Bad. I know. Bad. I know. That's what we're all about. Well, love it. thanks for coming in. We really appreciate it. Man, it's a pleasure. It's really great to be here. And it's cool kicking us off with someone as uh, renowned as yourself. Oh, come on. That's true. Thank you. So, couple of questions that uh, I have for you. First off, we did talk about uh, your record company called MOD. What does that stand for? Stands for my own damn label. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, MOF just didn't, didn't have the same ring. So. Yeah, right. Now, why did you, <laughs> you were obviously with a larger uh, record labels in the past. Why did you decide to leave? Yeah, you know, I was with Sony. Uh, it was the last big label that I was, uh, that, I, that I dealt with. And man, I know, I was there for three years and I gave them three really good years of my life. Right and uh, did everything they asked me to do, and it just didn't work. I mean, it works for some people, but right. it didn't work for me. And so I was just kind of glad to move on, and so, you know, I asked out of that deal, and they were nice enough to let me go, and so... So it was an amicable split? Yeah, it was. All yeah. right. Yeah. Um, now, is that the goal of every aspiring musician, to launch out on their own or to stick with a major label or what? I think it is. I think uh, as far as... Uh, when you when you first go to Nashville or whatever, I mean, I think trying to get on a big label is the is the the main idea. But I think, uh, as I said before, it's like it doesn't work for a lot of people, and so you either have to decide, you know, am I here to do my music with them or without them, or or do I have to have them? And right. In my case, it's like I don't have to have them, you know. Right. I was put here to do music, and so by gosh, that's what right. I'm going to do. And it sounds cheesy, but if it's your art and it's what you're passionate about, you have to do it your way, right? Yeah, and I mean, the freedom that uh, you have in doing it on your own is, uh, is priceless. Cool. Now, um, what is your tour schedule like, both in the States and in Europe this year? Well, the cool thing is uh, there's not a lot in the States because things in Europe are so so big right now for me. And uh, 
I mean, I started doing this independent thing about three years ago okay. and just sort of got a little life of its own happening in Europe, and it's just been phenomenal. I mean, I started headlining shows last year. We were drawing like 15,000 people, 12,000 people. That's crazy. And uh, it is crazy, you know, and I can't do that here, so uh, I always look forward to going over. So this year I'll work about 40 dates in uh, Europe, right. and uh, I head, uh, head that way very soon to uh, – get to work. So. Cool. Now, how do you explain or why do you explain why there is such acceptance and a, a huge draw in Europe and here where in America where country music was born, it's well, a tougher draw. I, I think that uh, part of it is the whole the whole corporate aspect of it. You know, it's really hard uh, uh, to compete here, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're an independent. And so as an independent, you can go to Europe, and the ma there's not a huge major label presence there. So uh, it makes it a lot easier just to get in there and do what you do. And they love the great music. I mean, they're, they're in it for the music and not anything else. And they can sniff out a phony. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so are you recording now? What do you got going as far as CDs? Yeah, I've got, I've got the current CD that is out right now. It's called Anywhere But Nashville, and, uh, which you have. By the way, have. it's right here, yeah. Anywhere But Nashville. How's that for a subtle slam? <laughs> that was my call. And, and so, uh, and I'm, I'm presently working on a brand new record that will be out very soon. And uh, uh, of course, that is all available at BillyH.com. Right. And uh, but I'm really excited about the new music too. I mean, the music that that I've got out right now is great. I'm really proud of that. But you know, always, when you're working on a new project, it's always you know fresh and exciting. Right. So yeah. Well, cool. Well, I understand you've got a couple of songs you're going to play for us tonight. Yeah, I guess so. All right. The first one is a song called Choices. Choices. And I want to get my ugly mug off the stage here and let you kick it. Yeah, I wrote this back in 1994 with my buddy Mike Curtis, and uh, George Jones recorded it, got us a big old Grammy nomination for it. Here we go. Outstanding, man. Thank you, man. I've had choices Since the day I was born There were voices That told me right from wrong If I had listened I wouldn't be here today Living and dying With the choices I've made I was tempted By an early age I found I like drinking I never turned it down There were loved ones But I turned them all away Now I'm living and dying With the choices I've made I've had choices Since the day I was born There were voices That told me right from wrong If I had listened I wouldn't be here today Living and dying With the choices I Guess I'm paying for the things that I have done. If I could go back, Lord knows I'd run, but I'm losing this game of life I've played. So I'm living and dying with the choices I've made. I've had choices Since the day I was born There were voices That told me right from wrong If I had listened I wouldn't be here today Living and dying 
with the choices I've made. Living and dying with the choices I've made. All right. That was outstanding. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Prop, bro. Um, now, walk me through how it came from you writing the song to getting into George's hands to actually getting recorded and the whole Grammy thing. Well, I mean, songwriting is such a cool thing because, I mean, when you write these songs, you never have any idea of what's going to happen with them. And in that case, I mean, that was written in 94. And I remember playing it for a lot of different people. And I went out on tour with Alan Jackson in 97. And I remember, you know, getting on his bus. He's out there singing it and stuff. And, of course, he... Uh, he even later did it after George recorded it. He, he did it on the CMA Awards, but he always loved that song. But a lot of people did. And yeah. I played it for George different times, and the timing wasn't right. And I think that uh, I think there were at least two different times that he passed on that song before he recorded it. And then finally, you know, when he did, it just worked, you know, and it yeah. ended up being a big hit for him. And uh, it was really nice to see George get back on the radio, you know, because it's so hard for those guys to get played these days. Right. And so it was really nice to see that song do it for him. Oh, great. It's a great story. And Thanks. Wonderful song. Thank you. Okay. Um, no more of my app, and we're going to turn it over to Billy again ah. for another tune called Cardiac. Daddy had a cardiac. Mama got a Cadillac. <laughs> the name of this one. I grew up in what I thought was domestic bliss. I had a daddy and a mama and a brother and a sis. Never knew nothing about the finer things. We were living on weenies, beanies, and dreams. Daddy used to take a lot of business trips, promising us all a better life than this. He said it was a sacrifice he had to make. Right about then, mama dropped another plate. Well, it turned out daddy wasn't nothing but a snake. He had a half a dozen women in a half a dozen states. Mama grew wiser as the years went by. She never said a word, she hid it all inside. Well, they found him face down in a motel room, smelling like a liquor and a lover's perfume. Standing by the graveside, Mama was a wreck Till the state farm man handed her a fat check Daddy had a cardiac, Mama got a Cadillac All of us kids done throwed away the tater sack Look at us now, living that life Daddy always promised us that he'd provide Daddy's on a shady hill, Mama's in a coupe de ville Never have to worry about another bill Daddy died smiling, but Mama got the last laugh. Daddy had a cardiac, and Mama got a Cadillac. Yeah, that's what he did. Well, it's been a while now since it all went down. Mama's still a hero all over town. When the preacher does a sermon about those who wait, Mama slips a hundred in the offering plate. And now each and every year on the day he died, Mama dresses up for a midnight drive. Where she ever goes, she never does say, but there's a fresh set of tire tracks on Daddy's grave. Daddy had a cardiac, Mama got a Cadillac, all of us kids done throwed away the tater sacks. Look at us now, living that life. Daddy always promised us that he'd provide. Daddy's on a shady hill, Mama's in a coupe de ville, never have to worry about another bill. Daddy died smiling, but Mama got the last laugh. Daddy had a cardiac, and Mama got a Cadillac. Well, Daddy's on a shady hill, Mama's in a coupe de ville, never have to worry about another bill. Daddy died smiling, but Mama got the last laugh. Daddy had a cardiac, and Mama got a Cadillac. Daddy died smiling, but Mama got the last laugh. Daddy had a cardiac, Mama got a Cadillac. Daddy had a cardiac, Mama got a Cadillac. Yeah. All right. 
job, man. Yeah, man. Thank All you. right. So we want to thank Billy Yates for being uh, kind enough to stop by our studio for our first show. And uh, make sure you stop by BillyYates.com to learn more about Billy, look at his tour schedule, and most importantly, check out the CD, which you can order online. And again, thanks, Billy, for stopping by. That Thank was awesome. You, man. Thank uh, you. It's a big first show for us. Uh, so until next month, uh, we will see you later. And um, thanks for joining us. So if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, or if you just want to tell us how much we suck, you can send an email to Corporate Country Sucks, and sucks is spelled S U X, at excite.com. So until then, keep not sucking, and uh, talk to y'all later. It doesn't rock, cause it's country. I don't care if you hate me or you love me. Like it or not, this song doesn't rock.